All right, you beautiful humans, this is a part two, and I wanna follow up on a video from yesterday about the Apple event and bring some of those questions from that video that you asked over there, bringing them here to this one to help level out some of these confusing buying decisions and options that we have. Full disclaimer, so I'm not wasting anyone's time, is that I do not have the M1 Pro or M1 Max device in hand right now, but I did order the M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro, and this video is mainly based off my experience of the M1 over this last year and taking the time to walk you through a couple of scenarios and possibly your thought process because I will admit my heart was racing through that purchasing process and sometimes our eyes and plans just get a little bigger than our wallets. I of course will be updating this information once the MacBook Pro comes in next week. So let's get our crying wallets out of the room and see if we can help each other and I am encouraging active participation among the whole community. So if you can help someone, please do not be shy. Now I wanna be focusing on pricing and some configuration questions between the different models because of, it, it, it looks pretty complicated and Apple is just taking advantage of what it knows about consumer buying behavior. So as I did in the video from yesterday, let's run through a couple of scenarios on Apple's site, but let's ask yourself these questions first. Do you want portability? I know these devices are beautiful and really capable, but you are paying for portability, regardless of whether it's a Mac or an Intel based machine. You can certainly use it in clamshell mode if you want that, like if you're looking for a desktop experience or pivot over to the current desktop offerings. Second, and really important, what apps and potential operating systems are you working with now and would this transfer over to Apple Silicon? As I've mentioned before, even Microsoft has figured out that they want to be able to pivot to any device with their hosted operating system, Windows 365, not to mention additional cloud-based office products that you can either use from Google, which is free, or Microsoft. And I will say that my heart does break a little bit for those of you that have attempted to push yourselves into the hardware and ecosystem to find that many of the programs that you might be using are still not optimized or even available and you're just losing some time and resource. And of course, will this change? It will, but we are at the mercy of the developers and it's not just Apple. And of course, third, for the creators out there that are into video, photo, design, or anything that you may have uh, questions about whether these are good choices, visiting many of those apps, sites, and community forums can be helpful with user feedback on specific camera codecs that you might be working with, certain file structures, or other media that may or may not play well with the software. And of course, lastly, these are not the MacBook Pros of yore. They're great devices, but I have referred to them as disposable devices, and some of you may get a longer life out of it depending on how you're using it, but getting a decade out of this machine might not be in the cards. And so moving on, let's get into the store, but this is me thinking out loud. So you're getting inside of my head and that can be a scary place to be. All right, so diving into the 13 inch MacBook Pro and starting at the base model, eight gigs of unified uh, memory and 256 gigs of storage. I've recommended for even the non-pro levels or non-intensive tasks, I've still recommended 16 gigs of RAM. It'll give you a little bit more longevity out of your machine. Uh, the, regardless of what you're doing, it's, it will help, I think. I know many of you are rocking the base model uh, MacBook Pros and doing just great, and that is awesome. But I do think that it is a worthwhile upgrade because it's not something that you can, you can do afterward. And as far as the internal storage, you can't do that afterward either, but you can add an external SSD or hard drive, something similar to that to get more hard drive space. So we are looking at $1499 US. And also too, for some of you who might be thinking like, yeah, but what if I go ahead and just bump up half a terabyte of storage just to get that little extra space? Now I'm looking at $1699. And of course, you're in my head. And so let's bookmark that there uh, when we actually talk about the 14 inch MacBook Pro. All right, so moving over to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, and so what we have here is we're starting with 16 gigs of unified uh, RAM and half a terabyte of storage. And of course, thinking about the price, $19.99. So a bump up between three and $500, just depending on what you do with that 13 inch MacBook Pro. And so that's gonna start you with an updated chip, M1 Pro. And of course, there's that half terabyte of RAM and the storage, you are getting the XDR display, ProMotion, so 120 Hertz. You are getting a newer design, keyboard, more I.O., so three Thunderbolt uh, 4 ports. And thankfully, I believe, I'm hoping that these are true Thunderbolt 4 as far as the throughput is concerned, but also the fact that they're going to be pushing multiple displays versus the M1 MacBook Pro. And just like I said, overall new design, newer chip, 
And here's the thing, when it comes to your money, I'm sure that there are things that you spend day to day as far as subscriptions, coffees, a lunch for yourself, or things that you're doing uh, that you can break down on a, on a daily basis. And if you break this down, the investment that you're making in this particular laptop, and you're enjoying it, you don't have to be a pro, but you're just enjoying it, then the cost, say it costs like $10 a day to enjoy this piece of tech. That is completely your decision. However, here's the thing. So starting at the base, you're getting that updated chip, but it's an eight core CPU, 14 core GPU. And I think many of you are probably thinking like, what? I, I thought it was 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU at a minimum. These chips, so the M1 Pros, these chips are the same structurally. However, this is what's called binning. And I will leave a resource for you to save uh, some time here. But essentially what is happening is that there could be certain components in that chip, on that chip. Uh, they're not performing as they need to. So those chips are binned. And like I said, check out that definition so that we can kind of keep moving forward. But this is where price bracketing comes in. And I have spent years in business and in sales. And so this is what gets you. So you're like thinking, all right, I'm already making that investment for $19.99. I'm getting this great device. I might as well, like, well, no way. I'm not going to move up to the M1 Max because that is just way too much because now it's already pushing me up to over $3,000 because then I'm, I'm defaulting to 32 gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna meet somewhere here in the middle and we're gonna get that RAM out of the way here. So get that RAM. And so now we're $22.99, still seems reasonable, right? And you met in the middle, that price bracketing. It's not high, uh, it's not low but you're right in the middle because that's where it feels comfortable. Like that's what I remember, 10, CP, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU. All right, here's a couple of other things to think about. 16, 2299, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Starts at 16 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of storage, same deal here. So now you've got that 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU and of course, really the same specs. And you're like, wait a minute. So you're saying for another $200, I can get a bigger display. I can get probably a larger thermal footprint here and, and maybe like an all around just bigger and better device. And if that's what you want, like more screen real estate, then again, this is, this is you thinking like, why not go for 20, like the base model 2499? Because it's even better. However, Moving back to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, you've already pushed yourself about $1,000 over that budget. Again, this is your money, but that's another $1,000 that's either on your credit card or out of your bank account. So just plain devil's advocate here. Now, what we can do too is like I said, I can upgrade this to the M1 Max and that'll default to 32 gigs of RAM. And let's go back to, and let's do one terabyte of SSD, 34.99. Go back to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And, I'll, and this is my configuration. And I did the one terabyte of storage. And so 32.99. So I'm within $200 of the 16 inch that should perform pretty much the same, however, here is something else to think about, something that I wanted to bring up that somebody had mentioned in the comments from yesterday's video. See this 96 watt USB-C power adapter for the M1 Max? Well, moving over to the 16, we have 140 watt USB uh, power adapter. Now I had said something about, well, you've got the bigger screen on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, you also have the bigger battery and would that have to be in place to be compliant with the whole thing or that whole marketing uh, piece of it'll charge up to a like 50% battery in 30 minutes. And so does it need that extra like wattage behind it to be able to maintain that? Does it need that wattage to just maintain the fans, just the internals? What we don't know and we will be testing is that maybe there is a much bigger thermal headroom here, like much larger, much higher thermal headroom. And so will these chips get pushed a little bit more, like a little bit harder uh, in the 16 inch MacBook Pro? We don't know, we can only guess. 
but that is something that we will certainly be updating on, whether on this channel or several other YouTube channels. Just something to think about. And for those that know you'd probably utilize that max 64 gigs of RAM or even the top end GPU because of the work you're doing, then you're probably pretty informed in this area. However, for others that may push beyond that 32 gigs or that 64 gigs of unified memory, as well as maxing out the GPU, you may be met with those diminishing returns, but will still need to run those tests. And as far as gaming, I do think developers will start to pay attention, but we may only see more options to game through emulation while we're waiting on native macOS support for those AAA games. Now, something else to consider is the overall price. And here's the thing, many of you might be saying like, these are really expensive. However, these were also compared and pitted against a 15 inch uh, laptop from Razer, a gaming laptop. And so it's an 11th gen Core i9, Intel, Intel Core i9 processor, along with the, the GPU, which is a 3080. And so when you saw those graphs that Apple had shared, that's what it was pitted against. So when you look at the, the configuration that I have, 3299 coming in uh, at US and 3499, if you look at the price of that, that gaming laptop and several other higher performing laptops, that is about the price. And sometimes Apple is even coming in below those prices. So this is really something to consider when you're like the whole psychology of it and the consumer buying behavior is that really like you are getting a good deal for that performance. Like I said, you don't have to be a pro. Maybe you just enjoy new tech. Maybe you just like to upgrade and, and just kind of be a part of this ecosystem and just enjoying it. And like I said, this is your money. This is your investment. I just wanted to clarify a couple of things when it comes to some of these prices. So it's not a matter of what is the perfect laptop for you? Again, do that research, look into what you're using, how you're using it. I'm happy to answer certain questions for you, but at the end of the day, like I said, there is that price bracketing and you might find yourself either going like, yeah, I'm good with the base or no, I wanna go all in, or you might find yourself in the middle. Speaking of finding myself in the middle, I am pretty tired and I'm sure you're probably sick of being in my head. So hang out with me over there on Twitter, Hang out in the comment section below. I will try to answer as many of you as I possibly can. You go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those beautiful faces. And I'll catch you right back here on the next one.